What's up guys and welcome to this video today. In this one I want to do something a bit different which is a bit of a full day of training and eating video as well as sharing some of my ideas and philosophies about why we even train in the first place. So you're going to be able to see what I'm doing to maintain my current shape or should I more accurately say return to my better shape because lately I've been doing about a week or so of traveling and obviously that's not the most optimal for maintaining your physique and training and stuff. So you're not in your regular environment, you're not eating the best food, you're not able to sleep as well as you can. And I've noticed my physique and the way I feel has declined a little bit. So I'm going to be showing all of the different things that I'm going to be doing to return to my optimal state. And the way this will go is really chill. I'm just going to be showing the different things I did in a given day and the things that I ate. And I'm going to be narrating over the footage about why I'm doing this and explaining a little about the type of training that I'm doing. So I always like to do a morning session in a fasted state, just after having a black coffee and a lot of water with electrolytes. And I do this about an hour and a half after I wake up. I make the coffee and then if it's a rare sunny day in England then I'll go and sit outside and enjoy the weather a bit before doing some meditation and then it's time for the workout and I like doing this because I feel way better after having that sun exposure and then working out after the meditation gives me much better focus on what I'm doing and allows me to push even harder when things get tough and you notice throughout the footage of this first workout that I become progressively more disheveled and sweaty as it goes on and if you're doing this type of training this is the kind of state that you want to be in which signifies sufficient work I'm not certain but I believe my heart rate gets to somewhere around around 165 to 175 beats per minute but I've had it over 200 before when it's been particularly warm which is pretty crazy but if you're healthy and in good condition then that's okay. Now the first part of this morning workout is in a similar format to those follow along circuits I uploaded previously which is the most intense part and then I also do a secondary part containing similar moves but less intense to finish and the total of this is about one hour. These workouts are designed in a way to accumulate fatigue because of the continuous movements that involve a lot of plyometrics and full body exercise combined with minimal rest periods. And so although some of the movements don't look all that difficult, when you're doing them after already working hard on the previous rounds, they can be really challenging. And I like to use the slightly easier movements to rest a little bit before going back into using those larger muscle groups again. So I don't ever go anything close to actually being out of shape. And honestly, it wouldn't even be noticeable to anybody other than me that my physique has declined a little bit, as I said. But I'm sure as you're aware, as people that train consistently, you know, you definitely notice when you don't look and feel at your best. And that's what it's really about. You know, whatever training you decide to do it's not really about how it appears to others but more how it makes you feel internally within yourself you are the only person that knows the best way to live for you and so the better that you can adhere to your own idea of that then the more alignment with your greater self and the more in tune with the flow of life you're going to be so the better condition you start in, then the more noticeable that detraction and the gain is going to be. But on the flip side, the easier it's going to be to return to your optimal condition once you're back in your regular environment. So if you're 10% body fat with very visible definition, then jumping an extra 3 or 4%, whether that's water weight or whatever, is going to be much more noticeable than say if you were at 15 or 16% and you gain that same 3 or 4%. This is normal and I think it's important to enjoy ourselves and relax a bit sometimes so we have a bit of balance. But I think just be prepared for what's going to happen if you choose to let loose a little bit. The way I look at it is that you have a few choices. You can go completely crazy, eat and drink whatever you want, not train and just throw caution to the wind for that period if you choose, but that will have the biggest consequences to your current base state. Or the opposite end of the spectrum is just to be super anal about everything and not indulge in any treats or anything at all. The more balanced approach I would say is where you're mindful of your actions, things like what you eat, yet you give yourself a bit of flexibility to enjoy yourself as well. And that also goes for non-actions, such as choosing not to work out when you normally would, because in that instance a non-action is actually still an action. I've done all three of these at different times in my life and that first option of just throwing caution to the wind kind of seems exciting but actually just leaves you feeling bloated and disgusting afterwards. And then you also have to contend with feeling really off within yourself and that has a knock on effect of there being more mental resistance when it comes to getting back on the horse because that forward momentum is really diminished. And then the second option remaining super strict really reduces my enjoyment of my experiences when I'm doing something like traveling and then in hindsight I always wished I'd enjoyed my Myself a little bit more. What I prefer is a happy medium between both and that's going to be unique to everyone depending on their regular predisposition towards training. So if you're somebody that loves to work out all the time then you're going to be happier attempting to replicate your usual training and eating as closely as possible while also allowing yourself to enjoy the experience and relax. And that's what I did with my recent trip so I still did get some really good workouts in there but there were a few days when I just wasn't able to do it and also a particularly heavy sushi buffet one day but that's okay. So that's how this kind of thing looks for me 
trying to get a few workouts in where I can, even though the conditions aren't optimal. It seems to be the ideal nowadays to like never break character and always be on point. It's kind of romanticized a lot, but in my opinion, that's just a very one dimensional view of the process that doesn't take into account that downtime and a break from your regular programming, which in my experience allows you to come back more motivated and energized when you finally get back to it. And this is getting like really meta, but I think a lot of you might be able to relate to this, which is something I've observed within myself is that if things are getting a bit stagnant, I'll sometimes kind of unconsciously sabotage my process a little bit and purposely fall off the horse by eating a load of crap or not training in order to have that like hero's journey of returning to my optimal state. It sounds kind of weird, but it's like if you slip into a state where you haven't got something really compelling pulling you forwards, then sometimes you have to create that purpose once again by backsliding a little bit so that there's once again something to aim for. I read this thing somewhere that Alsatian dogs are a breed that need a purpose and something to do because they have a lot of energy. And if they aren't given a compelling purpose, then they will invent one themselves, but it'll be something like digging holes in the garden or chewing and destroying things that they shouldn't be. So after that first session, I had this meal, which was five eggs with some sourdough toast, followed by fruit as a dessert. People have asked me why sourdough before, and it's because it's fermented, so it's easier on your digestion and won't bloat you like other breads do. And it's also lower on the glycemic index. Then I'll just drink a lot of water again because the amount of water lost through sweat was evident from the footage. And sometimes I'll put a little electrolytes in there again. And this has been a really important thing for me lately. So I was finding that I was often feeling kind of tired throughout the day, especially after that first workout. And I started having a bit more electrolytes, which really sorted that issue out. I always drink lots of water throughout the day anyway, but if you're working out a ton and sweating lots, then water alone won't be enough to properly hydrate you. I used to rely on more caffeine to try and solve this, which was definitely the wrong approach because that just dehydrates you even more and can also blunt your hunger signals. After that, I tend to do a bit of work at my computer for a few hours, which will be video or business stuff. And when I was doing that on this day, the garden started looking really attractive for a chill shadow boxing session. And it might be quite surprising that I like listening to some relaxing instrumental music when I do this kind of thing, because that really gets me into the flow. So like you can see here, it's just super relaxed, not much power. And this is how I like to develop my style, really, just playing around with different stuff and enjoying myself. And I don't have any plan for these types of sessions. I just get into a flow state and see where the moment takes me. So you can use shadow boxing for loads of different purposes, whether it's to warm up, technique development, going a bit harder to make it more of a cardio workout, or just doing it like I am here, which is really a form of kind of like an active meditation, you could call it. The good thing about shadow boxing as well is that it's just loads of fun and a form of training where you don't really feel like you're training, which in my opinion is the best kind of training. The first few rounds act like a bit of a warm up and then I start doing some more flamboyant techniques like the kicks and tricky moves as I went along. After I finished that, I was hungry, so I had this Greek yogurt bowl with a load of fruit, a bit of oats, some dark chocolate and honey, which tasted amazing. And I've been experimenting with upping my calories quite a bit lately, and I'm working at being able to get to eat the maximum amount of food I can while maintaining my current physique, and then just seeing how far I can take that. So I really like doing these little experiments with my body and training and stuff, and I find it makes things fresh and more interesting. After that, I settled down to do a little bit more business work again before the evening session with a friend of mine who's a pro fighter, Dean Pattinson. So 
you can check him out on Insta. Before I go to that session though, I'll have some more fruit as well to fuel the session, which in this case was a banana, some dates and an apple. I tend to train with Dean once per week and we usually warm up with a few pad rounds followed by doing a lot of other drills together working on various aspects of martial arts, but usually quite a lot of defense and counter stuff because it's good to take advantage of having that extra person to work with to do that type of stuff rather than just training techniques together because you can do that on your own when you're alone. Now this footage you're seeing now isn't from that exact day because the gym was way too busy to film when we actually got there so I've included footage from a previous session we had instead where we did very similar stuff. These sessions aren't focusing on intensity and power stuff we tend to do a lot more control and precision type work but we're always moving around a lot for the whole hour or so that we train together and so we're always very sweaty by the end and have had a great workout and this is just a little montage of some of the stuff we worked together in that session. One other thing to mention as well is that I always cycle to the gym on a bike that's got no gears so it's a little bit of extra working for the legs. It only takes me about 12 minutes to get there either way but every little helps you know and on a very windy day it can actually be quite challenging. Bruce Lee stated in his training notes that he would use cycling but purposefully get a terrible banger of a bike in order to make it much harder work than having some smooth racing bike. So I always like to try and find these ways to incorporate little bits of exercise into my day like this and if I'm traveling somewhere that isn't too far away I'll always cycle. And you can even do things like making sure you take the stairs instead of using an escalator or if you want to be really elite like Jackie Chan he apparently used to always sprint to the top of high-rise hotels he stayed in using the stairs instead of the elevator. So after this session is over and I get home, I'll eat a nice big post-workout meal with a bit of fruit to finish up as a dessert. With my food, I don't count calories or anything anymore and generally eat quite intuitively. So this was the food I'd had on this day, but sometimes I'll be hungrier and I'll have another full meal on top of what I've already had. It just depends on how I'm feeling really. After I've had that meal, I might do a little bit more work or chill and watch a show or play a video game for an hour or so before I go to bed. And at the moment, I'm watching the new season of The Boys, so that's what I did on this day before going to bed. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. I had a lot of fun making it and as you can see the main thing is consistency and working over time to build that work capacity to greater and greater levels. If you like this one please let me know in the comments below because I'm quite keen to do more of this kind of lifestyle type content, stuff that's a bit more relatable so that you can see what I'm doing day to day rather than me just presenting polished sort of information all the time. Please join my free telegram group for more stuff like this that's unscripted and off the cuff and I'll see you in the next video. If you liked this video guys, please let me know in the comments what you thought because I'm quite keen <laughs> Fuck's sake Fucking pigeons